Coming to you from Silicon Slopes, I'm Christina Ayanian with NASDAQ, and joining me is Chief Marketing Officer of iHeartMedia, Gail Troberman. Gail, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. Talk to me about the study that iHeart did with Pushkin on the new American consumer. Why did you do the study and what, what is the study all about? Sure. Um, so we um, we at iHeart we uh, we talk to everyone every day, right? Across every format. Just on broadcast radio, we reach nine out of ten Americans. With you know, who are country fans, hip hop fans, pop fans, sports fans, right? So we talk to real America, and yet we work with brands and marketers and advertisers all the time. And very often, there's a disconnect between what the brands think American consumers are interested in and what we're hearing from real people out in real America. So we. We said, what if we did a survey and we actually tried to understand, is there a disconnect happening between marketers and the people they're trying to reach? So we partnered with our friends at Pushkin, who uh, do a lot of amazing podcasts with us, Malcolm Gladwell and the team there, um, who are great arbiters of culture. And we found some um, amazing disconnects between what marketers think, feel, believe, and what the people we're trying to reach often think, feel, believe, and value. Talk to me about those disconnects. What did you find surprising with the study? Sure. I think one of the most um, surprising things was um, just uh, sometimes marketers are chasing trends way ahead of consumers. So, uh, you know, there's all these topics like um, NFTs is a great example where, you know, marketers, we got obsessed with NFTs and new and next shiny objects. We love chasing cool and next. Um, but 40 percent of American consumers have still not heard of NFTs. Wow. Haven't That's heard surprising. of it, right? Yeah. Where 0% of marketers have not heard of NFTs. Right. And then you go a little deeper and you start thinking about like what really motivates people. And, you know, it's really interesting. The top two motivators for consumers are uh, family and friends. Not surprising, right? We're all motivated by the people close to us, but the top motivators for marketers are fear, fame, and fortune. Right. So already where well, how you're approaching a topic and what you're thinking about, there's a disconnect. And, and I think sometimes we're ahead of where the consumer is. Um, we're trying to do the coolest new next thing and break new ground. And yet consumers are living in the real world and their values may be different and what they're interested in may be different. And so you've really got to find that real consumer out in the real world if you're going to grow. Going off of that point, do you think human bias can sometimes get in the way of success? And if so, how do you change that? Right. It's so true. We're people, right? We're people first, no matter what your job nature. is, right? You know, I'm sure, you know, today you're interviewing a bunch of fascinating people and you find some more interesting than others. There's some topics more interesting than others. And we all gravitate towards what interests us. But I think so often, you know, we see, you know, trends being set by, you know, Madison Avenue, Hollywood, Silicon Valley, maybe Silicon Slopes um, increasingly, right? There's, there's people who are living in these very specific worlds and have very, in, you know, interesting lives and shared passions. And, and yet that may not be the same interest or passion that your customer has. You may be obsessed with new technology because you're an entrepreneur and you work in new technology, but that may not be as interesting to the people. And so as a marketer, our first job is to really understand where is our customer? Right. And then how do we find them? Right. So like at iHeart, we're always trying to explain to customers how how big broadcast radio is, how massive and how fast podcasting is growing and what a great platform both those audio mediums are to reach consumers. Because consumers today spend 31 percent of their media time with audio. And yet the average marketer spends about 10 percent of their budget on audio. So we think there's a huge opportunity for marketers to grow with audio and most brands are underinvested in that opportunity today. That's yeah. amazing. Going off of that point, as chief marketing officer, you've played a pivotal role in positioning iHeartMedia as a leader in the podcast industry. And this is the fastest growing medium amongst consumers. It's as you true. mentioned, do you think podcasts are here to stay and why are Americans specifically so attracted to this ongoing trend? Yes, I think podcasting is it is a rocket ship. There is no question. And um, it's definitely here to stay. It is not a fad. Um, you know, one of the things we asked consumers in the study that was just fascinating and marketers was um, what are the two things you would be least willing to give up? And we gave them a huge range of, you know, hundreds of things to pick from. And uh, both marketers and consumers agree one of the top two things they don't want to give up is uh, snacking. 
So you, you cannot pull snacks out of anyone's uh, cold, dead hands. However, uh, consumers, uh, one of the top two things they are least willing to give up today is podcasts. But marketers, the second thing for marketers after snacking that they wouldn't give up is um, online shopping. So very different, right? Because you're coming from a different place, right? Absolutely. Marketers want to spend money and uh, consumers in this case, I think might be a little ahead of the marketer, right? The, um, we're just seeing massive growth in podcasting. Um, it is a daily habit now. Um, for 18 to 34 year olds, they listen to podcasts every day and more than half of Americans are listening to podcasts. So it is not a uh, it is not a uh, fad. I think podcasting is just growing massively and it's a, just a such a powerful platform for brands to communicate their message. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think is that disconnect how you were mentioning before marketing versus consumers? Why haven't we found a happy medium yet? You know, it, you know, there's there's probably so many reasons. Um, you know, I say this a lot. We we live in the age of data, and I think you know, as much as you you would imagine, more data would make us smarter and less biased. And yet, I think we have so much data at our fingertips as marketers. It's almost like you could build a case for anything, right? There's always going to be one more data point, one more thing, one more reason to justify doing things that we think are interesting. Um, and I think it's so important for marketers, um, particularly, you know, if you're living in, you know, uh, big coastal cities, you know, to get out and really talk with real consumers, um, enjoy the media they're enjoying, listen to the podcast they're listening to, turn on the radio, listen to what they're talking about. Um, we're going to be talking later with Bobby Bones, who is, you know, one of the, you know, has the number one country show in all of America um, and talks to, you know, more than 10 million Americans. Um, you know, with his show, just his radio show alone, and then his podcast. And, you know, that's an example of someone who's really in touch with what real Americans are thinking and feeling. And that's why they tune in every day to the Bobby Bone Show to be part of that conversation. And now the same is true with The Breakfast Club for hip hop fans or the Ryan Seacrest Show or Elvis Duran Show for pop music fans, right? As a brand, you've got to be part of the conversation Americans want to have. Um, and that may not be the same conversation you're personally interested in. So I think it's so important for us to, to, get, to get serious about audio and the ability to have these conversations with different segments of your audience, where they are, where they live, and talk to them about what they're passionate and interested in. It's that realness and that relatability because at the end of the day, a podcast is like a brand, a personal brand that consumers want to be able to relate with. Exactly. You know, I think one of the reasons that audio is so enduring, right? Broadcast radio still reaches nine out of 10 Americans. Podcasting is on fire, right? And the reason is because most of those shows are live, human, unscripted, and the hosts, the creators, they speak their minds, right? And so you're, you're having, it's, you know, it's, it's so interesting. Um, so many consumers will say they tune into a lot of our, our radio shows um, because they're music fans. And yet most of our shows, they play a few songs an hour. You're really tuning in for the conversation with the cast to learn about music, to be part of culture. And, and I think podcasting's the same thing. You find the topics, the hosts that you relate to, um, and you really get to know them. And so we see, we see the lowest ad skipping rates in any medium, um, you know, under about 12%, um, because people are so engaged in the conversation. And because it's, again, live, unscripted, human, and, and relevant to you. And so as a brand, you get better recall, you get you know, better lift in all your brand metrics, your conversion metrics, because that consumer is, they're there and they're engaged and the context is right to be just sort of insert yourself into a conversation. Absolutely, and they're coming back for more. <laughs> they are, they are. We're seeing just huge growth in the iHeart Podcast Network. That's yeah. amazing. Gail, yeah. thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insights. We greatly appreciate your partnership. Awesome, thanks for having me. <laughs>